Hello everyone. In this video, we shall be discussing the occlusal aspect of permanent maxillary first premolar. Here we have a specimen of the left permanent maxillary first premolar. When you look at the occlusal surface, roughly it is hexagonal in shape. It is hexagon having a mesiobuccal slope, a disto buccal slope, the distal outline, the distolingual, mesiolingual and the mesial surface. The distal surface is longer than the mesial surface. The mesiobuccal and the distobuccal surfaces are roughly the same. The distolingual seems to be longer than the mesiolingual surface. When you look at this particular tooth in a bounded rectangle, you will observe that the buccal ridge is more distally placed compared to the lingual ridge. Similarly, the distal contact area is more buccally placed than the mesial contact area. Let us talk about the occlusal surface. When you see the occlusal surface, you can appreciate the buccal cusp tip and the lingual cusp tip. The buccal cusp tip is formed by the mesial cusp ridge and the distal cusp ridge. If you observe the mesial and the distal cusp ridge, they are almost in a straight line. This straight line is such that the distal cusp ridge is more buccally placed than the mesial cusp ridge. This configuration makes the mesial cusp ridge and the mesial marginal ridge meeting at 90 degrees, the distal cusp ridge and the distal marginal ridge meeting at an acute angle. Coming on to the lingual cusp, the lingual cusp is little more sharper and the mesial and the distal cusp ridge of the lingual cusp, they form a continuation to form a semicircular lingual outline. When you look at the occlusal surface, you observe a developmental groove in the center. This is called as the central developmental groove, which extends mesiodistally in the middle of the buccolingual dimension of the occlusal surface. This groove forms a smiley, which also continues as a small groove crossing the mesial marginal ridge. This is the mesial marginal developmental groove which crosses over to the mesial surface and ends after a small distance, slightly lingual to the mesial contact area, which is located somewhere in this region at the junction of the middle and the occlusal third. This central groove is met by two collateral grooves. You can see the mesiobuccal collateral groove and the distobuccal collateral groove. These two grooves meet the central groove at two pits. This is the developmental pit on the mesial side, mesial developmental pit, and this is the distal developmental pit. From this pit, you can see a small triangular fossa. You see a triangular fossa, mesial to the distal marginal ridge, which is called as the distal triangular fossa. You see a similar triangular fossa distal to the mesial marginal ridge which is called as the mesial triangular fossa. From the buccal cusp down to the center and from the lingual cusp down to the center of the tooth you see two triangular ridges which meet together to form a transverse ridge. You can appreciate the triangular ridge from a little angle here. You can see that the triangular ridge goes down to the center and meets the opposing tooth. So do we see the triangular ridges depth from the mesial and distal aspect? Not exactly. Generally, the depth is deeper than the marginal ridges. Both from the distal aspect as well as the mesial aspect, you cannot see the depth of the meeting point of the triangular ridges. Also, another important point is more of the buccal surface is seen from the occlusal aspect. This may be because the buccal cusp tip is more inward placed than the lingual cusp tip. If you look at the specimen, the buccal cusp tip is in line with the tip of the buccal root. The lingual cusp tip, on the other hand, is in line with the lingual border of the lingual root. This configuration 
makes more of the buccal surface visible from the occlusal aspect than the lingual surface. These are the features of the occlusal aspect of the permanent maxillary first premolar.